Hi, everybody. This is David Nevins for City Biz List. And uh, today's guests are from the Acme Paper and Supply Company, who, believe it or not, are celebrating their 75th year of doing business. And uh, so uh, congratulations, first of all, and welcome to uh, Ron and Keith Atman, who serve as CEO, co-CEO, and vice president, respectively. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, no, our, our, our pleasure for sure. So Ron, uh, the co-CEO of Acme Paper, this year marks, as I said, a pretty significant milestone, 75 years uh, in business. Talk to me a little bit about the growth of Acme. And uh, there aren't that many companies that can start 75 years ago and, and remain as relevant, and I would dare say even more relevant uh, today than in the beginning. Uh, share with us a little bit of your history and how that occurred. Yeah, well, certainly more relevant today than, than in the beginning, <laughs> because when starting out, we started out in a 1,200-square-foot uh, garage that my father rented off of, uh, off of uh, Baltimore, in, uh, Baltimore Street behind the shot tower. So it uh, started from really humble beginnings, and uh, over the years, we've been able to really grow in, in every respect. And I think if you ask for, you know, what's the, the key word or the key essence of the growth, I, I would say it's innovation. And uh, that's something that our company has always been known for. Uh, going back to, if you go back to the 60s, when uh, plastic products were first coming out into the marketplace and my father, who founded the company, was really instrumental in bringing those things to the marketplace. The first person to find the products, the first person to take them and introduce them to the marketplace. And uh, things have certainly come full cycle because now we're transitioning people away from plastic and back to some of the same substrates that were used back in the 50s, but also a lot of new materials too. So, you know, we, we always try to be, we, we make the analogy that we try to skate to where the puck is going, not to where it is today. And that is, um, you know, that's the essence of our being. But, you know, it's, it's products, but there's more than products that are responsible for the innovation that we have. It's, it's also processes. Um, right now, we're in the midst of undergoing a whole uh, redo of our ERP system. And, um, you know, we look for the best possible thing. And we, again, we're going to have something that's ahead of the curve. And we've also invested uh, tremendously in our facility to make sure that it is efficient and that it is a good place for people to work in. So um, that, you know, th I, I think that's our byword. And that's really what's helped us uh, really grow and progress in the marketplace over all these years. So, Ron, I would say, um, you know, as I've, as I've known you guys, um, y yes, uh, not just a paper company, not just a supply company, not just a, uh, a delivery company, but you guys are, um, would it be accurate to say, problem solvers for businesses, organizations, hospitals, schools, et cetera? Yes. Yeah, so if, if you look at what our, our mission statement is, our mission state is to provide quality products and services that help our customers be more profitable. And that's what we're looking for, whether it's products or whether it's processes, but we, we're selling solutions. We're not selling boxes. That Solutions are what come off of our truck. And, um, you know, that's something that uh, we're proud of. You know, through the years of the scope of our products has changed tremendously. We started off with seven different uh, paper products that, you know, it was a struggle to even find it in 1946. But uh, that has um, expanded tremendously as uh, we've added lines. We've become a dominant player in janitorial products. And this past year, we rebranded our janitorial division to say hygiene and facility solutions in line with what is going on in the market today. And we've ex added on restaurant equipment. So now we can go into a a food service operator from the day that he has a concept that he wants to be in business and be a help to him as far as the designing his whole restaurant and kitchen and then continue to supply them 
as um, as they continue to uh, grow their business. Well, well put, Ron, and, and certainly very critical, obviously, in, in today's marketplace. Um, Keith, so you're um, the you weren't around seventy five years ago. I'm I'm pretty sure. Nor nor was Ron actually, but. Um, <laughs> 75 years old. Um, just tell us a little bit about uh, some interesting stuff about the founding of the company, where I think people are curious as to the name Acme Paper. And then I know you've added a slogan uh, more recently, much more than paper. Walk us through, Keith, uh, a little bit of that history, if you would. Sure, I would love to. So, uh, so my grandfather, as my father intimated, uh, founded the business in downtown Baltimore. Uh, it was actually the brainchild of his mother, who, when my grandfather came back from from the World War, said, you, you should, rather than get into the family business, which is the deli, why don't you look to do something that is just a little bit more, more regular, it's it's consistent, there's there's opportunities for growth. And so there was there was an opportunity, and he he started out that way with starting with just simple deli papers and, and things that would go into confectionery stores and, and so forth and built it from there. Um, the name itself though, was, was a, it's a really interesting how he came to it. It, it was two, two reasons ultimately. So, so the first one, which is really, a, I think a strong understanding of where he was going with the business is that when you look at the name Acme, if you look it up in the, in the dictionary, it, it relatively means the highest point attainable. So he wanted to be the best. So, so starting with that, he also recognized back in 1946, the internet didn't exist. So how do you find a company in 1946? Well, it's either you, you, word of mouth, which still pervades today, but the other one was the phone book. And so in order to be found in the phone book, he wanted to be first. So there was other there was other paper companies that were in the phone book. So he went with Acme. So between the name being the, the highest point attainable, he also wanted to be the first. So uh, so that's kind of where where the name came from and, and the direction that he took the business. Uh, as my father also mentioned, I mean, we've over the years. I mean, it started like I said with deli papers and things like that, confectionery bags. But we've grown tremendously to facility solutions. Um, we're a significant player in things from the pandemic, such as hand sanitizer and uh, and other and other products. We've, we've grown into restaurant equipment and supplies. Where again, like my father said, we we build restaurants from from beginning to end. I like to tell people from the toothpick to the walk-in box, uh, we we have it all. So uh, so we, we look at all those different areas. We also get into customized packaging, which are just great marketing solutions for our clients. Uh, when you look at any restaurant today, their they want their name to be out there in the public for people to see whether they're walking down the street or they see a DoorDash or Uber Eats driver delivering something, they wanna see their name. So we help with those types of solutions to find cost-effective ways to be able to provide easy marketing out into the uh, into the industry. So, Keith, um, much uh, as you uh, much more than paper, indeed, for, absolutely for sure. And I didn't realize that um, I've always um, heard and thought of you guys as a um, a three generation company. But now that you're giving the credit to your grandfather's mother, that would be four generations. So uh, again, <laughs> congratulations again. Hey, Keith, you, you um, alluded to the, to the pandemic. Um, and I know that you all have been incredibly active in the mid-Atlantic region, Baltimore, Washington, Richmond, Philadelphia, uh, and so on in helping businesses um, adapt and, uh, and handle the pandemic and uh, so just just share with us a little bit about your work in that area. Well, first and foremost, it was a lot of sleepless nights. I can tell you that uh, early on in the pandemic, one of the things that we recognized was the industry was going to change and we needed to change with it or or we would be sitting on the sidelines. So we're very fortunate, like I said, to have such a wide breadth of offerings and some great expertise within our organization where we were able to pivot overnight into other areas. 
So whether it was looking at our relationships with people like Gojo, the makers of Purell and others for whether it's hand hygiene or disinfectants, those were the easy things. Those were, those were supply chains that we had set up and it was just a matter of getting more and making sure that they stayed strong. Um, but where, where it became really the power and the driver of this whole phenomena was looking at where we needed to go to find those alternate options to keep our customers safe and keep their customers from being able to come into their stores. And that was really in that PPE world where there was probably many of nights where myself and my brothers were probably up to one, two o'clock in the morning, talking to people all over the globe, trying to source and find supply of whether it be masks and gloves or whatever it may be to again, make sure that one, our salespeople can help their customers, but two, also be able to find additional customers that today, now that we've helped them through this pandemic, we're hopeful that uh, they'll become longtime customers like many of our existing customers are today. Um, I mean, I think those were the things that we really tried to drive is we can't sit here and wait for the business to come to us. We've got to go and come go to the industry and to our customers and new customers and try to help them. Many of these people were struggling. They didn't know what to do. And quite honestly, looking at some, the market in general, there was a lot of concern and a lot of just question marks on where to go. And, and we made the decision really quick. And, and you've got, in, in, in these types of environments, you have to be fast to a decision and, and really take the risk to make sure that you're taking care of not only your customers, but the families that we also support day in and day out. Right, for sure. And I know, I, I know some of your customers and I know that they, they credit Acme with um, you know, helping them get through, whether it's a hospital or school or, or whatever the case may be. So again, kudos uh, on those sleepless nights and taking your role so, so seriously. Um, hey, Ron, if I could come back to you. Um, so Acme Paper for 75 years, um, three generation, maybe four if you want to count uh, your grandmother, uh, but three generations, family owned and operated since its founding. Um, so what's, what's the plan for the next 75 years for uh, transitioning leadership, developing new leaders of this very valuable family owned business in the mid-Atlantic region? So um, actually, you know, we're, we don't have to reinvent the wheel here because we've already been through one transition as we went from generation one to generation two, which is my generation. And, um, you know, we learned a lot as that happened and we tried to take the best parts of that and bring that into what's going to happen as we go from generation two to generation three, if that hasn't really already happened. But, uh, but uh Going back to as my brothers and I were uh, growing up in the business and my father was just a great listener. And when we would come to him with some thoughts, some ideas, things that we had to do, he was, he was there, you know, he was, he, he would listen and he didn't necessarily agree with everything. He didn't necessarily do everything that we suggested, but we implemented a lot of it. And from that, you know, we saw that how important it was to, be able to do the same thing, you know, with generation three as they come in there. And, and I think we've done that. And I can point to a number of things that have been done because generation three really took charge of it. One of them, one of the things is I mentioned that we're going to a new ERP system and that really has been Keith's baby. Um, he and his brothers really conceived it. You know, they researched as to who we were going to pick as our vendor and now Keith is, uh, so he may not have the sleepless nights because he's searching for, uh, for PPE, but he, has, but he has the nights that, that go pretty late as he uh, tackles not only his uh, supply chain job, but also um, implementing the new system, which we hope to go live with in the, in the next few weeks. So, um, so, you know, that's just one example, but also the product selections that we've been involved with going back into um, the early 2000s, you know, the, the Keith, Keith and his brothers, they came to us and said, look, we need to be involved with uh, some more of these sustainable products. 
there wasn't a really tremendous market for it, but they could see that, especially as uh, much business as we do in the Washington, D.C. market, which is a hotbed for that kind of thought, that uh, we needed to have solutions for people because they were going to come calling on us to uh, give them guidance on how they can have sustainable products and make their business uh, more environmentally friendly. So one of the first chores that we had was when the House of Representatives came to us and said, we want to go to an all compostable program. Nobody knew where to find a lot of those products, but we found products for them, everything from their paper plates and utensils to uh, water bottles that were made out of a, comp a compostable plastic. So again, you know, we talk about, uh, I, I think they learned how resourceful my father was and my brothers and I have been, and they've taken that and applied that in their own way. So the transition is well underway, and I'm glad that they still let me come into the office. No, Ron, very, you know, very well put. And I, w I would just add as uh, myself, as, a, as an observer of uh, area businesses, I think uh, I would be hard pressed to identify a family owned business that has operated and uh, so efficiently and effectively over the years and has, has it seems to an outsider, uh, transitioned seamlessly from one generation to the next. I'm sure you can at another time off camera uh, share stories that uh, might make it seem a little less seamless, but uh, certainly to your customers, um, you've done an unbelievable job. Hey, um, Ron, in, in, we just have a minute or so left, and I know you and uh, and your your brothers and um, and and sons and and the whole admin team. Uh, while you've built this amazing business over the past seventy five years, you know that um, building a business and being a part of the community. Uh, is just much more than generating sales and delivering products, um, and that you. It's also about giving back to the to the community, and I I think it's fair to say that you've also left a pretty remarkable philanthropic legacy during this time. So uh, we only have a minute left, but you know, just share with us some details of that if you don't mind. Well, I'll just say philanthropy goes back again to the four generations ago with my grandparents and they gave that to my parents and, you know, it's been passed on through that. So we're, and we really feel fortunate that we're in a position to help so many people and to give back to our communities. This year, in honor of our 75th anniversary, we've selected 75 charities that we're going to be making significant gifts to. And it's just our way of saying thank you. And, and we also, I just want to say we give more than money to, to a lot of these institutions. We give our time and our effort and and our leadership skills where it's asked for. And it's really, a, you know, just a really gives us a, all a great feeling to be able to do that. Well, again, thank you, uh, Ron. Thank you, Keith. Congratulations to the Acme Paper and Supply Company. Uh, 75 years uh, in business and continuing to grow. Um, what an achievement. Our guests today have been uh, Ron Atman, co-CEO of Acme Paper, and Keith Atman, Vice President of Acme Paper. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. It's been our pleasure. Thank you both. And this has been David Nevins for City Business. Thank you for watching. <laughs>